Now, the court date will come. But we've already won. It's logic. On the spiritual side of things, it's impossible for them to implement the mass destruction that we've heard they intend to implement. It's impossible. That's on principle. A part of us can't destroy the whole of and survive, and nature won't allow it to happen. So in the stress of that almost happening, something else happens. And let's not look at the fear of what's supposed to be happening. We look at what, if that doesn't happen and something else happens, we have this free world with a lot of free people in it. And we'll be in this situation. No leader sitting around together wondering what we do next. We could start off like uh, one idea that comes in my head, like Trump's play of uh, it's fun to be wrong campaign. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And just like have people, you know, with a YouTube channel, people get up, anyone can download and just like admit that they've been wrong and the video will have a sad. Even about the most basic. Yeah. Last yeah. one, yeah. you have to be right. To be right. You don't know, never know you're right until you're wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah you have to prove yourself <coughs> wrong to be wrong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you'll never know you're right until you know what's wrong. That's how science, that's science, that's science that's works, isn't it? They do all these testers when they put them out in science, they make sure that they test absolutely 100% that they to try and fuck it up as many times as they can so they know that they're absolutely right. The funny thing is, is 10 years down the line, they've had that all of that was wrong Especially with fundamental science, is only the best theory that you've got until someone proves you wrong. It's just a theory. Everything is just a theory. There's no fact. It's just a theory. Until somebody comes along and goes, actually, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until that happens, you can't prove anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until that happens, you can't prove anything. 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 Until that happens, you can't Watching how, how we, the natural person, learn. Infants don't know mistakes. They don't know the concept of right and wrong. It works. And whatever way it works, it's information. So they're holding a, a cup and the milk spills out. And a cup, it works, the milk spills out. Eventually they get the idea that if you hold it, you're going to spill it down your dog. That's fine. <laughs> you know, and they, they, they get 
to that for us by watching adults around them. I was talking to somebody the other day about nappy training. Right? This culture has a huge thing where every single one of us was shouted at, beaten, whatever. We were forced to learn how to shit and pee in the right place. The reason children in this country don't learn is because they don't see adults shitting and pissing. Children have to see the world to learn it because they've got mirror neurons within them that see it, feel it, they, the whole movement is already in their brain when they practice it. So the point is about the wrong thing. We go to school and they tell us about mistakes. And when you make a mistake in school, there's a judgment, good, bad. And this is really crucial because wrong always is judgmental. So nature goes, there is no right or wrong, there's what works. And there's what doesn't work. And what works in nature is that which nurtures. It's really, really simple. You can destroy the logic of this culture from that basis. Is this practice that you're engaged in working in a nurturing way, is it nurturing for everybody involved? And that's everything involved. You can't isolate one thing out of nature and say just that thing without repeating the whole lot. So within this, within what we're talking about here about being indigenous, is we are indigenous to Every single human being is indigenous to Earth. Earth is about nurturing systems. So there is a definition that you can go that's logical, that's scientifically understood, it's well described in biodiversity, in molecular science, in, 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 in all kinds of sciences. So it's a really good basis to take it. If anyone is interested in actually seeing this from um, a corporate side of things, there's something to look at, it's called Cradle to Cradle Design. Yes. And it's, it's about holistic business. It's about bringing in. It's a wonderful. It, it, the guy who really set it up does wonderful talks about it. But it's exactly it's exactly that, and it, you know, it shows how you know this evil corporations don't have to be evil corporations. You can take a company and go, look, it, you can have growth, but it has to be growth that nurtures the people yeah. around it, it nurtures yeah. and brings everything. So, so what I want to say is that for me, it's not about. I agree with your, the whole thing about protest and all the rest of it because. Really, if someone's got power over you and you plead them to change, they get a hard up. Yeah, well said, man. Whether they give you whether they give you what you want or not, they get a hard up. You're acknowledging you you're acknowledging that. So there's a couple of a couple of concepts. One is rights or privileges granted by somebody who's got power over you. Natural expectations are emergent. They come out from you. They're inherent to you. They cannot be taken away. They can be denied. If they're denied, then they're denying your humanity and your biological reality. That's one thing. The other side was um, a nurturing society. That disables all the logic. Um, because you can go to a corporation and you, know, you can say, it's, it's not about... It's not about Protesting what they're doing, it's about standing in our own right. This goes back to the freedom of the land. I'm not in opposition to you, I'm just standing in my right, in my beingness as a human being. So I'm not in opposition to you, I'm just telling you, here is another way and it works. And I'm not partaking of your way, which is really, really important because then you're not on the off book. You're not, if you protest, you're protesting in the context of their argument. Of yeah. their logic, but yeah. create conflict. Yeah, and create it helps. Yeah, create conflict, and that they can use all that in different ways to to, to maintain that that hold. So for us, as we talk to people, as we for me, it's a our movement's worldwide. It's grassroots. It's emergent. It will never try to talk to the system. It will just simply be itself, and eventually there'll be enough people who won't fucking do it, and so it's all apart. It starts with parenting, it starts with growing your own food, it starts with fronting the system in little experiments in your own life. Not in ways that throw you off. You know, don't be, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see people very often being like sacrificing themselves and having their lives ruined trying to make a point. It's a much more subtle, beautiful, nurturing way to do this. And that's what we now need to engage with and, and kind of, you know, all of us are going to make our own learning journey. Nobody's got the leadership on this because it's emerging. No, no, I, I, I think that's that's part of the Christian Western condition. You know, suffering is good. Fuck off. 
<laughs> Listen, people tell me, you know, that the brutality of abuse I had as a child made me stronger. I go, fuck you, I was strong anyway. I didn't need that to fucking make me stronger. <laughs> but there are times when things are hard, and if we have each other to hold us while we're doing that, then we don't have to suffer in silence or suffer on our own. And sometimes we might have to, you know. But, but I'm, what I'm saying, you know, it's like nurturing is really profound as a logic. And I think that's where the indigenous thing is really important. To say you're indigenous is to say you're off the land. You come up out of the land. And everything that comes up out of the land nurtures. That's what it does. So, Tony Blair, you came out of the land, but you're not nurturing. Fuck off. <laughs> you know, don't talk to me. No, Tony, don't even start. <laughs> Fuck off. You don't have a leg to stand on. You've got the guns, but your logic is fucking puny. It doesn't exist. And that's the way to approach systemic thinking, is to disable it at the root. Don't engage in a discussion with it. Don't try and negotiate with it. It's pointless. They're not going to give up. I mean, if, you've got all, if you were to be sitting there with all that power, all that money, all those guns, everything you want, at a drop of a hat, Really? If you twist your head off, is that funny? You love that. Why the hell would you give me up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really sorry. I'm just going to have it. Oh, look, here we have it. Like, oh, better take my shirt off. Look, take that as well. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. not going to happen. And yeah. it's exactly and it's exactly how Comedia says it. It's totally about engaging with each other and creating a community of, of businesses, organisations, people, of farmlands, of things that do not feed the system. They feed each other. They connect to each other. You know, if you so it's an idea that I've heard for ages about connecting sustainable businesses together where, they, where you take every part of the business and you go, right, what parts of your, of your business are not sustainable? Right, let's find some way of actually getting a sustainable version of it and, and creating that and setting up. And suddenly you get this webbing effect of all these different things that help each other out and work together on that. And it's, this, 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 is, this is the influence of it. This is, this is where, where every sort of thing you get. There are plenty of businesses out there that do it. There are plenty of um, organisations doing it. Plenty of people on their own doing it, just connecting with each other, and that's, we're probably the most fragmented major group in the world, where there's, you know, the sustainable community, the environment, they're just fragmented all over the place, where we're like, we all know something's wrong, but we don't have the, the capabilities of major religions and politics that bring those things together and make them a force that can go and do something. In return to that, I'd say we do have our indigenousness, and that is so native to us, and that would bring us all together, yeah, and that's what it will bring us together. But that's why we're so diversified. And that's why these things are important, because that's where that's where we need to go. You know what? We as we are a group, we mm. are a people mm. to get to, together that are like these massive religions and, and political political groups who have got their affiliations and their ideologies and things. We have what we want, and we need to, and that's that. That's how this can all grow. Sure, but the thing, the thing there isn't so much material as privilege. So what we've been sold all the way down the line, going back generations, is the privilege. And that's still what 
I come across every day is the reason people yeah. won't listen to the things I talk about and yet are really attracted to it. They can hear truth in it, but something in them is blocking them from being able to accept it. <coughs> and it's privilege. And what, what, what do you privilege? mean by privilege? Um, yeah, exactly. We're privilege better off than other people we're because of our system. Yeah. Um, <coughs> where we're starting to know that it's right. I don't know if anyone's heard about that, but that's part of life. And we've done so many things. And we're asking anyone who wants to join, get back to nature, and sort of just walk away from the system, Still there, I was there. No, 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 I was going to say where this goes overall, as far as I'm concerned, is a sense of identity. Because we've been differentiated so much, separated so much, move, go, move, shift, go, move, shift, go, move, shift, until we've no idea where our piece of land and our people were once. We've no claim or connection to any piece of land in England anymore, unless we're the conquering bloodlines. And there's all this immigration, and there's all this stuff in the newspapers about immigration, and we're all made for you white-skinned, redneck people around the place and that we need to really get into the British National Front or whatever you want to call it. But it's the same in Ireland or any other European country. The thing I'm trying to say is us non-normal people, people who aren't feeling like we're normal and are no longer feeling bad about not feeling normal, are starting to feel really good about not feeling normal and that we held out this long. So what I'm working on and why I call this gathering is so that we now have the beginnings of a sense of identity. And with that identity comes our strength. Because I know you people are out there, I'm going to speak more cheeky from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as. Well, so yes, I think we're all, we're all actually doing different things and coming together and comparing them to anyone. Yes. And that's absolutely the best way to do it. As Ben said, you know, I mean, the ego village has been done to death, and the council's obviously do their thing with that. And obviously, moving from place to place, that's going to put ahead of us straight on death system as if he's trying to trace that and bomb around the country, etc, etc. And that's fantastic. And some other people obviously that have homes and kids are not prepared to give up to that level. But you're like not paying parking fines, you're not paying speeding fines and stuff like that. But we all come together and compare those from one shape or another. And that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. you know? What happens when you don't pay them? Do you just keep saying I'm not yeah. What can we do? No, okay. Well, that's what I mean by you have to be prepared to lose something. Your car, maybe. Essentially, yeah, you you can ask I don't believe that. I don't, I don't, I don't actually believe if, if, you really, if you really do start to look at it, I mean, this is, this is a lot of something kind of Danny's been looking at. When you do start to look at it, when we're looking at the law of the land, oh, yeah, yeah. when you start to really look at the rules, the wording, the legalese, how things are said, you don't have to lose your car. No, no, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, One at a time, lads. One at a time. Come on, easy. Yeah, yeah. And it's only two or three people speaking, so notice yourselves two or three people. Yeah, it's only that you have to be prepared to because they're laid hands to speak to where they will break their own laws and say, right, we will. Absolutely. Just, just like that is true. Okay, so accept it. Yeah. Accept it. <laughs> but you two, come on, stop. There's so many more people here. As well as kind of not doing what you're told, it's also like doing things like growing food, growing plants, um, talking to us. Like one thing I'd love to see from our communities, we're all kind of relatively educated, relatively uh, wealthy people. 